Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new behind the scenes video. This is a behind the scenes for my one of my brand new videos called which YouTuber has the best texture pack. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I made this video as it's one of my personal favorites for Bedwars. So without further ado, let's jump into the timeline. This right here is the entirety of the intro, which Granted, it looks like a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of different colors and things like that, but I promise you it's not as difficult or complex as it may come off to be. So let's first break this down into the first half. We'll start off with talking about the song that I used called Dreamwalker by Caro. Um, and it has a very simple piano with a, you know, a record CD player in the back, very calm. And then it leads into something. Something's building, of course. And then of course we have the chorus. That's the song. Now, you may be like, well, um, why is there multiple tracks for the audio, right? This is, all of this right here is the song. Um, and the reason for that is if I drag this down and I extend it. This is actually a continuation of the song and the chorus, I believe, begins right here. Um, so the reason why I cut it short is because um, I needed the song to fit my needs. It went for, I believe, 16 bars when my intro voiceover was fit for 12. So I cut down the audio to make it fit 12 measures of music. Now, a key thing about this is a lot of people are really intimidated by cutting audio because it's like, oh, I have to get it all perfect and I have to make it sound good and, and whatnot. Just cut the audio. <laughs> it's not hard. Tinker with it, find something that works. If nothing works, choose a different song. But typically, if you have a very bottom line, basic understanding of music theory, you should be able to easily mesh it up well to where it will sound completely fine. And so what I've made here, this part is the actual continuation of the song. This part is the last four measures before, or this at least, is the last four measures uh, between, this part right here is the last four measures uh, before the chorus. So what I did here is I faded out the actual part and then I quickly faded in the last four so that it turns into a 12 measure intro. And it sounds completely normal. I bet most people, if they have, haven't heard of this song before, granted it was probably everyone, um, they would have been like, that. that is completely a part of the song, like that, that's just how it was, but no, it's not. So don't be afraid to cut audio. Now we'll talk about the actual footage part. Uh, so up here at the top, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about the black bars. In one... In one of my um, videos, I believe it's the Island Hardcore video, I cropped footage to make black bars, but I put effects on that footage. And then up here in this little corner, it had like some squiggles and all that from the effects. So it wasn't a clean cut black bar template. So I ended up making one in Fusion and it's really, really simple. All it is, uh, is you have two backgrounds, both of which are black and then you just bring them down or up to whichever so that they look something like this and then the middle part of course is transparent. Uh, you can move them by using the transform node which is right here. Then you just have to put them into a merge node and connect that to the media out. Really, really simple stuff. So now you have black bars and it's a template. So if I disable it, then there's the rest of the footage but the black bars just make it so much cleaner in my opinion. Now talking about the actual footage, this is a replay mod of Hollow. It's a Bedwars map. I mean, it's clean. It, it, it's supposed to be Bedwars, so of course I'm going to use a cinematic-esque Bedwars replay mod. 
Uh, and then it has a vignette and prism blur. Super simple stuff. Here on the file explorers, right here, I'll Within play this part. Minecraft. But what makes some packs stand out among a multi- Really simple movements that are smooth. They're not harsh movements, so they're pleasing to the eye. Uh, what is done here is this part, uh, it comes into Within the center, Minecraft. right? Minecraft. And then it but moves over to give this guy some space. This is just a position X keyframe, um, and then it is made into a smooth form. And then this one, um, and the bottom one, actually. When I talk about one being more predominant over the other. But what makes some packs stand out among a multitude of other packs? That line, um, what makes them stand out? So I made one stand out by literally making it bigger and the other one making it smaller. So this one, of course, is just keyframed and then it's made into the smooth form. Really easy for that part. Then they're pushed out. We brought the YouTube emblem in as well as these two PNGs. Again, if you don't know how to use fusion masks, they're really simple. Add a rectangle mask or an ellipse if you're looking for a circle. Rectangle, and then I change the corner radius right here to 0.1. What that does is it allows, it gives you like that nice little curve at the very end. It's not too big, but it's enough curve to realize it and it looks very, very clean. Of course, don't forget your drop shadows to make it stick out from the back. Really simple stuff here. Then this is a reused clip from my winter texture pack video. Um, and then I just took a picture of AK's YouTube page basically, and then I used an ellipse right here. Let's go check that out. This is, oh no, sorry, it's a rectangle. Never mind. But uh, the corner radius is at one so that we can get the smooth curve on the edge. So you see there's actually no side like there was on the last one. It, this is all curve and it goes straight back into the actual curve. Um, then we do a crossfade or a, um, whatever it's called, I forget. Why are my favorites all the way down here? Oh, I don't have favorites, okay, cool. <laughs> I guess they're all gone, so I gotta find them again. Um, it crosses off, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was looking for. And then these are just three text things that fade in, 0.5 seconds each. Best YouTube release texture packs for you to enjoy. Quickly fade in my logo, and I did a little bit of changes here. Um, all I did is add an edge detect light rays. Of course, I'm starting to, to do light rays more for the video side. Um, and this is keyframed, of course, but I typically have it all the way to the bottom so that we can get a large ray coming out. And then I position it to where it goes up instead of like down. I used to do down. Now I do up. And then edge detect, of course, um, have the gamma and brightness up for this and the edge width not too bad or not too high because then it will look, uh, I don't know why this is kind of bugging out. It'll look something like that, which is not ideal. Your brightness needs to be up or else it will look like that, which, mind you, that actually does look really cool, but we, um, we like it up there. And then have your gamma up as well or else it'll look like that just honestly just mess around with the values and then it'll be fine then we get into the chorus so let's go back to the audio and you'll see here that we have a lot of colors here so what i did for this i timed it up and color coded it so that i easily knew what was happening where it was supposed to happen and I also had all the times laid out, so exactly where I needed to cut footage. So I'll just play this for you. So that is one segment out of four. There's four of them. So we have the pinks and then the yellows. So that would be section two, this would be section three, and this would be section four. Um, all this is section, I guess 1.1 with this part right here is just a 
massive. Um, so we want loud, exuberant, um, bright colors. So of course on this, I have a prism blur so that you can get the colors coming out again, a lens distortion so that the edges kind of wrap around. So then it kind of almost feels like you're in a cinematic experience and the light rays, of course, uh, very, very small. Whereas on my logo, I would have the light rays down here. That's too much, of course. So I have it on 0.9 because it's very minimal, but it's still noticeable and it adds a nice touch. Um, and then you can see here on the waveform, we have a large, and then it kind of goes off, right? So at the point where it goes off, I added this fusion comp with a opacity. I don't know if that's said right at 30 and I faded that in so that there's just a slight dim in the brightness which correlates to the silence um, and then of course it goes back into the bright colors I do the same thing here as well however we're kind of climaxing into this part so I do something with my logo I make a compound clip and it's just cut. I think it's every 0.1 seconds. Yeah, 0.1. Um, but it, it's super simple. So this is what it looks like originally. And then I will just fade that in. That's all that is. And so every now and then you'll get like just a little glimpse of my logo right there, which looks pretty cool um, because it's going with the kind of stuttering synth. Um, a big thing with music, you really have to know um, if your music is chosen to be background music for something like this then you're doing something wrong um, you should be choosing music to accent your visuals and the actual video so if I just put a lo-fi song over this uh, or just had no intro at all or something like that. I mean, that no intro is fine, but if you're going to use certain music that have cool and really interesting techniques and styles and sounds and rhythms, you need to accent them because that's going to stand out. And that's why I went ahead and color coded all of this so that I could, ex I could see exactly what's happening and what I need to do to make the song be as most present as it can. This first yellow part, 1.3, uh, is the creator of the pack. This part, actually, I forgot to mention, this is just the creator name. Then it's the name, pa uh, the pack of the name, the, whoa, 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 the name of the pack, sorry. Um, then the creator um, of the pack, their name, and then the sub goal that the texture pack was released at is the last part. And the only thing here, which I guess I could cut that there if I wanted to, is on every kick, I cut the um, the clip forward so that you could see a visual movement. It keeps things moving instead of super smooth at this point because this song, um, even though it's nice and bright and colorful, you don't necessarily want um, to not have movement at all. So a little bit is good. And that's kind of the, the taste that I wanted for that. So then we get into the second part. All of this is the same, except for a couple variations here and there. So like this first part, uh, it's different from the beginning where there's actually not silence this time. So I made a different, um, fusion comp where I, um, keyframed the opacity going from zero to 30 back to zero. So it'll symbolize the fade out and then the quick fade back in. Um, and of course it's smooth so that it looks good. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy that aspect of that. Um, this was weird. I think th this was something, I don't even know what I did here. What in the world did I do here? I. <laughs> I actually have no idea because I have two transitions happening at the same time. I, I, I don't know my thought process, so I'll just explain what actually happened. This compound clip 2.1 is 
a just a cut on time, by the way. So that would be the actual cut into the next section of the music um, of the scenes, right? So that's just a straight up cut. Um, and then this part is. What? I have no idea what I did here. I think the, the intention was I wanted the clip to last through the, the tunnel of light here. And then I wanted it to come back out as this clip. And there might have been some complication there. Typically, just mess around with it. You'll probably find it. You def I didn't, I don't know what I was doing here with this part. I want to see what it looks like without. Okay, so I had that there to keep the text. That's what it was, so that the text would be there. But still, I mean, I could probably add that one into here. I don't really know, but there's that for you. And then we have more, of course. This part had a, a change in the kick, so I accommodated for that. Um, this had a, a cool slur up into the music, so I zoomed in and I didn't want Flames title to appear there because if it appeared with the zoom in, it would actually be before the kick right here. So I made it fade in from zero from the back, uh, which looks really clean in my opinion. Again, with the opaque fusion comp right there. This is the exact same thing, I just color graded it differently. This part's gonna lag my computer. Um, but the rest of the, this part is pretty simple. It's just a copy paste, but you're changing the values of the text, of course, you're changing the PNGs, so it's just, and of course the background footage. Uh, but it's the same style of work. This part was a little bit interesting. I wanted to, it, it kind of had a fade down. And um, I don't know what compelled me to do this, but I just thought of doing, using the black bars and another compound clip. This, uh, I see. Um, I just keyframed it to move. So that's what I did. Um, I keyframed the zoom and the rotation angle. Um, something I actually learned in this process. Um, these are smooth, of course, even though it doesn't look like it, they are. Uh, this one, zoom Y, or I guess zoom X is the same. Yeah. So instead of having it like this, so that it would be a smooth, you know, I actually had it dip down um, so that the actual fastest point was right here. So it looks like it's it's going down faster, and I didn't even, I didn't even realize you could point this up to do that, but it actually worked. So there's something if you're looking for a smooth point but going faster or going slower, you can do that. Um, and then I quickly slid this up with a keyframe on the softness. It's somewhere. It might be inside the compact clip, but you can see the softness there. And then I keyframed it when it got up so that it wouldn't be there anymore or else it would look weird. Um, pushed in Abby Elise's YouTube. Now we're almost done with this part. This part was a little bit quick, but I had to time it with the cuts. So I quickly slid in Anders, showed him that and then we get into the compound clip. So you'll see here, we cut there because that's another kick. So the footage goes in and then, again, it kind of goes down and then right back up. I actually keyframed the volume here to go down just a little bit by negative four. And then this part was just a keyframe camera shake from zero, zero, zero on motion, speed, and PTR. PTR stands for pan, tilt, and rotate. 
Um, it's basically the craziness that happens. Um, so if you want a shake that's really, really fast, turn up your PTR. Um, and then the actual time, the, the clip itself is just that, right? So we keyframed the camera shake. That was it. Yeah. And then just a zoom as well. We keyframed the zoom from 0.95 down to zero. And then I actually used an overlay from It's Yume, who's a new guy I found recently who joined a server um, that I saw. And he just had like these overlays. So I'm like, okay, I'll take one. And it's originally blue, as you can see there. That's, that's what the original looks like. And so I color graded it to look like orange. So if I play it out a little bit. Whereas the original's blue, which is pretty cool. So just at least in DaVinci, you can color grade anything. I really like using the RGB mixer. It's uh, easy. It's simple. Uh, you just sometimes it's a little bit hard to understand because it treats red as having all three values of RGB, green as all three values, and blue as all three values. That's a little bit complex, but honestly, if you tweak the values and find something that works, you're, you're eventually going to get what you want. This part as well, the curves custom, and you can click RGB and whatnot. So if I wanted to increase red and then hit this dot, I can just put it up to increase the red. Now, I've already done color grade on this, so it's not going to do red, but... Um, you can use that as well. Um, and then the Y is the brightness of it. If I wanted to increase the brightness like that or decrease it down there. Um, so these two are the easiest and simplest forms of color grading or just changing the color of a clip like I did right here. Um, and then I just added my transparent logo or else I would actually be cropping out the, the effect and added a cool stutter sound effects down here. So my logo would just kind of appear stuttery, um, which is pretty cool. And that is the whole intro. That took 25 minutes. Holy crap. <laughs> um, so it looks like a lot. And I think the way that I just explained it, it might be a little bit. Um, it, might, it might be a little bit hefty for some people, but... Uh, this is just years of practice coming in, and it's not anything immensely complicated. It's really not. Um, it's a matter of situational awareness and what to do in a certain situation, coming up with your ideas. And I get a lot of my ideas from the music that I listen to and watching other people. That's why, as a content creator, you're not only creating content, but you're consuming content so that you can get ideas on how to edit things. Um, yeah, that's about it for the intro section. To me, it was not complicated. It did take seven hours, but I think it was a good trade-off because it actually gave me really good stats. So let's go check out the stats real quick just to show you that this works. This video got almost 600 views, which is kind of crazy. Good amount of subs from it and a lot of watch time. And that watch time specifically came from people watching the video so on average i was probably the the top of the bottom for the 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 typical retention but here at the intro and all that some people skipped it sure but a lot of people liked it those 44 percent of people that stayed that's where that came from because people were astonished by it and then um some people even just stayed through the whole entire video so overall i had roughly 10 to 12% stay through the entirety of the video, which is really good. 50% of my viewers are still watching at the 30 mark, 19.2% uh, and two and a half AVD. Um, of course, this can be better, but it's still really good. And then for my reach, I had, oh my gosh, it's gone up since the last time I checked, 6.6% CTR, which my usual is like 3.1. So... People like the title, people like the thumbnail. And then once they click, they're instantly greeted with a cinematic experience. And then tw if they make it 20 seconds in, which over half of the people did, then they get to see that crazy, you know, edit, I guess. Um, so people got hooked and that, that was really, really good. 
So now that that's done, of course we have to do my audio extension. This is a signature at this point, which again, the song does not end there. Um, let's, that's not the end of the song. The core, the, the out core is still is going, <laughs> which is crazy. But what I did here is this, this little colorful part. I don't know, just had some color. Um, I don't even know what instrument that would be. Um, I guess a synth or maybe like a key or a pad, a mix of a key and a pad. Um, but I just added the audio extension. Um, again, if we open the timeline, it's the same right here. And then we just duplicate it, extend it out, mute it all the way down. And so that gives us a lot of extra room to work. And then we put on the reverb effect onto this clip to make that. And of course, when you're making that, I don't know why this is at 250 room size. That might be a glitch. I don't know. But increase your reverb time, decrease the wetness just a little bit um, so it's not like screaming. And then it should sound something beautiful like this. Um, which sounds really good. And then of course that fades into our first game. That that part is laggy for some reason. Right, guys, welcome into the first pack. This is, is it, and then that transition kills my computer. Um, but yeah, there it is. So all I did here with the, the tennis training OST, I don't know, I like that. I just clicked the wrong one. Again, I thought outside of the box and said, hey, there's a really cool drum opening and it's like, what, a singular measure? So I just did something cool. I took my my typical um, template here for like an opening uh, sequence of a game and then I just cut it up to match the chops and then just brought it ever so, ever slightly closer, I guess, I don't know, English. Um, and then eventually just brought it right in. Did the loading bar, rotate 90 with a swoosh. I like the swoosh sound effect. Super simple. And now we're into the game. Uh, and it's by Cloudy. So now people after seeing all of this, they're gonna be like, okay, so this guy knows what he's doing. And it's a cool pack because it's about texture packs. Of course I clicked on the video, so I wanna see the texture packs. So now they're gonna watch the video, um, which is how people get hooked which is good. Um, one thing about using, or I guess our next topic, lining up POVs. When you have multiple POVs to work with, so I played with AK and he sent me his POV. When you have multiple POVs to work with, you wanna keep them lined up at all times because that makes your workflow so much easier. I saw someone today um, editing a video and they had a POV of someone, but only the parts that they were using were in the timeline. The rest of it, they weren't. And so if they ever wanted to make a change or something like that, they would have to go back and retime everything and things like that. And it's just a pain. So at the very beginning, I believe I even linked up the footage before I ever started work on the intro, just because that is the first thing that you do. If you have multiple POVs, you link all of them up um, so that you can keep all of them in time together. So if I ever wanted to switch to AK's POV, I can do that. And that Maybe is literally right there. And that is what he's doing. Uh, so it's just perfect. Um, and then all you have to do, if you want to make a cut somewhere, you just have to cut here and then on your actual clip and then do it again and then delete both. So it's just two extra, it's one extra click with a little bit of prep time, nothing major. Um, and overall it looks looks really good and it helps you in your workflow. Um, so when I am using his POV, I have a POV indicator, also a template that I've made. Um, all this is, it's, it's from the Island Harcourt video. I just, I, I think I either remade it or I went and copied it and then just made it for AK. So I took his, um, his profile picture. So I took his profile picture, I 
did some corner stuff to it. I think that's like a 0.3 radius or something like that. I don't know. Added a drop shadow there. The background is just a gray because he has a, um, a black persona. Um, he, he likes to color black. A lot of his profiles are black. But of course, if I used black, it would defeat the purpose of the outline around the text. And some of the black on his profile picture would blend in with the gray. So I made it dark gray, but it stands out enough to where it still fits in his his niche of color um added the text and the, the the blinking live dot again super super clean and added that whenever i was in his pov so that people would know it's small but it's very high quality traded bro and of course you have the drop shadow there to uh, um... make it look like a tab almost like a thumb tab uh and that's just how you edit the games you slap some music onto it, you cut at the important parts, add in the POV indicator or a POVI whenever you're on someone else's POV, and then I use an audio extension to end it. There we go. Not the greatest transition ever, um, but at this point I just want to get the video out. People wouldn't really care if it wasn't the highest quality edit right there because I just went right, right back into another game. Um, of course, this is a template. I changed the background to fit the map. That's something that is really, really cool that I, I think that I do is um, every time I use a template, I can change the things about it to make it fit the scenario, even though it looks the exact same as before. That's what a template is for. So of course we can change the text there, Mango 16X. It's created by Mech, whereas before, back here, I had it made Chico 16x fill load and then created by Cloud Sheets. Of course, it was on the Toro map because we played on the map Toro. It's Rubey's 5K, whereas end game one of four, whereas on the Mango one, this game two of four, and then it's Mango's 2K sub pack. So, of course, we can change everything and all the values to fit our certain scenario, but this still looks the exact same and feels the same. So, it keeps uh, some sort of continuity in your video. Um, an L cut here added some of AK speaking Look at this while we're in the loading name. screen. Thick. Thick. Look at this. Look at this guy's name. Thick Gobbler. <laughs> Interesting names of the high pixel community. Thick, thick Gobbler. Oh. Um, L cuts are nice if you just want to reduce the time a little bit, and I clearly don't use them enough, and J cuts are a thing as well. I typically like L cuts better, especially in that scenario, but, you know, um, it's your choice. You can, you can do cuts if you want to. Um, all I did here with the music is just faded up a match, the, the matchup from We Party Soundtrack. I like the sound, it fit the, the, fit the vibe that I was trying to go for. This fusion composition is a yellow uh, background with a 40% opacity. Opacity, I've said it wrong, <sighs> whatever. <laughs> Y'all get the point. And then I cropped it to where it'll only fit a size like that. And then I keyframed the crop right so that, and with smoothness, of course, so that it would just gracefully slide over where we're talking. Again, YouTube is a show and tell game. It's not just saying something and then showing where it's at in the general vicinity. It's showing exactly where it's at. And so in this situation, I want to see the person that's named that name. And so I'm going to highlight it because it's funny. Uh, again, more edits. What happened here? What the hell, boy? <laughs> that's right. Um, this part, I was getting a bed. And he was in an in a insane fight, so I just decided to play it over each other. One thing that I like to keep in rule of thumb for my videos, I would rather have two sets of video going on than replaying audio. So what that means is I'd rather have two sets of audio, or sorry, video, like my POV, as you, as you see right here, AK's POV in the, in the main screen center, instead of showing AK's POV and then going back to show my POV. And what that does, if I go back, I am hearing the same audio again, back to back. And to me, that breaks the flow of the video. So I'd rather show two video, 
two videos or two POVs at the same time so that I don't break the flow of the audio because then it keeps the video smooth. So all I did here is I cropped it, added the corner radius again, a drop shadow, quickly showed that I broke the bed but I'm gonna kill because you. it was what an important hell, aspect boy? in the game. Here we go. And then just wiped it back out. Really simple there. Um, here as well, I timed it up with the music. If you couldn't tell, I did change the music halfway through. Um, I just felt like the vibe changed and I didn't want to extend the matchup song for five minutes, so I just decided to change it. Typically, my, my video, or sorry, my games last like either two and a half minutes or so, two to two and a half minutes, or it's a really long game and I, I edit it into like a five minute game. This was like a five minute game, so I just decided to change the song entirely just to bring a new feel to it. Um, so at the very end here, when we're at the last fight, Ain't no way, ain't no way. How? How? Oh. Let's go. Thank you. You can hear the music. It goes, bum. Uh, and I change POVs every ain't no time. Way, ain't no way. How? How? Right. Oh. Let's go. Again, very subtle accents of the music, and it just makes it that much better. Oh. Another Thank audio you. extension oh to end it. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. That boy's <laughs> lag was worse than Oz King, bro. That's how you know. Literally. Fade it out. This, again, was not one of the greatest transitions, but... I just did it anyways. Um, Keyframed, a camera shake, and a transform, as well as the softness, so that it's not a hard cut. As you can see, I don't, right here, I, I enjoy having that softness so it doesn't look immensely hard cut. Again, it's not something that someone's going to notice, but for me, it's just, it's easy to do. Um, this is the third game. Just edited the third game as normal here in the fourth game and that is it the bodyguards you know this was hype man appreciate yeah. it i didn't have an outro for this video and at the time that i was editing i had family over um so making an outro or recording something is just something i didn't want to do at the time so i just decided to take something at the very end of my recording which is always why i try to record a little bit before and a little bit after the needed parts just in case if anything else happens like this we were just like, hey, dude, appreciate it. Yeah. All right. That was a great recording. That was, that was a really good recording session. And it was, it worked out because it's about five seconds. And so I just had my ending screen up there. I had AK's channel linked as well. And it just worked out. People are typically going to stay for that um, and, and click on something. So that is the whole video. That was a mouthful. So I'm sorry that took so long. Um, but it's not that complicated. <laughs> Um, the games at least are not complicated. This is something that y'all can do in your sleep. Um, and then the intro, of course, y'all got the whole rundown of that. Um, just the biggest takeaway from this video is music. Um, audio is half of the viewing experience. So if you um, are making a video and it has crazy visuals and all that, then it should probably have some crazy sound design too, which I'm a hypocrite by saying that because I don't have crazy sound design in my actual games. I use an audio extension and a swoop every time or a whoosh every time I do a, a transition. It's not anything crazy. I could definitely do more and I am working on it in the process. However, for actual music, this part, um, you want to accentuate the music. Um, and have the the music accent your visuals as well it's kind of like a a trade-off and a, a contract almost like your video is going to help your audio and your audio is going to help your video so just keep that in mind when you're editing your next project with that being said that is the full entire behind the scenes so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace out